YouTube, what's up? It's your resin 3D printing guy. Back with a FDM printer review. So yes, we also do FDM printer reviews on this channel, and this is going to be one of them. Uh, thankfully, Flashforge was kind enough to lend us, yes, lend us a uh, Flashforge Adventure 3 to do a review on and also use it as a giveaway. Um, unfortunately, by the time you guys see this video, the giveaway has already happened and the winners have already been announced. Uh, and it actually went to a TikToker called Art Overkill, I believe it is. Um, he is, uh, his name's RJ on there as well. Um, but we have been printing with this a little bit uh, just to see how it goes. And just as I kind of expected, this is a printer where, while it has a small build volume, we're talking about 150 squared, essentially. So it's 150, 150 by 150. Um, so it is a very, very small build volume. And technically for the price, some people may not think it's really worth the money because it's at a $400 price range. Now, you could probably get them a little bit cheaper if you go through Flashforge, but at least looking on Amazon right now, you're looking at $399 for sure out the door. Um, but I will say that, yes, even though it's a little bit more expensive and it is a little bit smaller build volume, comparing it to, you know, the likes of an Ender 3 or a Voxel Lab uh, Aquila or an Alagu Neptune 2 or what have you, and now those type of starter price ranges, this offers quite a bit more than a starter printer would. This is actually kind of like a starter printer, all-in-one, ready to go. So what I mean by that is you will have the ability to print um, PLA, TPU, PETG, and ABS. Yes, even ABS. Because this is an enclosed chamber, it's all in a box and everything like that, all you have to do is simply change out the nozzle because there are two different nozzles for this unit, which makes it kind of unique and very simple to swap between those so you can have higher end temperatures for the nozzle. So the nozzle that's on here right now is more or less for like PLA and kind of PETG. And then the other one, um, you can switch it over and use it for ABS. You can probably print polycarbonate or nylon with it. Uh, but I don't have that stuff to, to print with, so, you know, we just kind of went more or less with PLA, PETG, and ABS. Um, so I'm going to show you off some of those prints that um, I did with uh, at least the PLA side. Of course, on the ABS stuff, I don't have around here, or they're mounted on machines, so I can't really show you that, unfortunately. So uh, my apologies but at least I'm going to show you the PLA parts that um, we printed with the roll of PLA that came in here. Now, that is another downfall, I will say, of this printer, um, but it's not something that can't be worked around. So the downfall of it is on the side here is a little trap door, and when we pull it out, you can see there is a very small spool here. Uh, now, you can probably fit a 250 uh, uh, kilogram spool on here, but essentially, you're limited to a smaller size spool. You cannot fit a normal size uh, filament spool on there. You would have to essentially make some sort of a spool holder and feed it in there. Um, my suggestion, obviously, if you're going to be using this for higher end filaments, uh, like ABS, nylon, polycarbonate, things like that, get a filament dryer and just feed it directly in there. That would probably be the best uh, kind of bundle, uh, so to speak. Uh, but I wanted to touch on some cool features that this printer has besides the ability to print higher materials that most printers can't out of the box. Um, one of the things that it has is a built-in camera, so you can do time lapses, you can watch remotely. As long as you set everything up online, you're good to go. Um, and then there's a lighted chamber, basically, so you can see everything that's going down. Um, you do have Wi-Fi printing, and you also have the ability to connect to different servers. Uh, there's like cults on there. There's a couple other ones. I forget what they were, but essentially you can go through and you can connect to those servers and download files directly from them or upload your files directly. Uh, if you're doing some prototyping and want people to have those, uh, those prints available to them if they need to. So it's very, very nifty, very nice. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of 
like this printer a lot. I wish it was more of the standard in 3D printing, but again, the price range is a little bit out of there uh, for most people. So just putting that out there, if you guys are looking for something that's kind of a uh, one and done, like I want an EBS machine on the cheap, this is probably going to be your best bet um, in, in my opinion. And also, if you guys do or do not know who Flashforge is, uh, Flashforge has been in the 3D printing industry for quite some time. They usually use these style box printers, uh, and they do have different variations. You know, this one's the Flashforge Adventure 3 Pro, and, um, you know, this is one of their smaller ones. They do have the 4 Pro, which is a ginormous size printer compared to this. Um, you could probably actually fit this printer inside of that printing area uh, for the Flash Forge 4, but obviously you're going to be paying a pretty penny. Um, so there, there are bigger machines. Don't think that you're just limited to this. So uh, right now we're just kind of discussing this specific printer, the Flash Forge Adventure 3 Pro. Um, but uh, yeah, that was some, uh, some tidbits that I wanted to tell you about. Another thing is leveling. So technically the system boasts that it's got an auto leveling. That's kind of true. Uh, so what it is, is it's basically a one and done leveling. So when you start first start up the system, it basically talks you through on doing the calibration, setting up the machines and everything like that. Cause there are some plastic bits in here that are holding everything down and it. It basically walks you through that. One of the processes is leveling the bed. Now, that's nice, but it's also not nice because if you are someone who doesn't know anything about printing and just kind of willy-nillys it and goes about it, you can probably get this leveled or close to it. Uh, but I noticed at least on my first try, I went to go and level it and at least three of the corners are good. The fourth corner might be just a tad bit too close because we did hear the extruder clicking a little bit. Um, on one of the prints that I was doing. And I kind of figured that because while you're leveling, it does tell you how far away uh, you are from the bed or how, how tall it is. So you're, you're essentially your Z height. Um, so I noticed that some of them, like I said, the three are all within the same spec and then the fourth one wasn't. Uh, but essentially I was going by what the system was telling me and it says just to touch the nozzle to the bed. So that's what it looked like. But again, I'm pretty sure that was off. The downside of that is it's basically a one and done. So you can't level this or re-level it while it's printing. So that's one of the, I guess, another downfall, I would say, of this printer. Again, it's not a huge thing. You could go back after the print is done and get it all set up. Um, but unfortunately, you know, if you're in the middle of the print and you start hearing that clicking because, you know, you're, you're doing a full build, build volume, uh, type print, it essentially has that issue. So you're going to have to either stop the print or wait for it to be done to essentially re-level it. So um, that's something I wish that they kind of incorporated a little bit more where you can change your Z offset on the fly. That's that's something I think a lot of printers um, definitely um, have a better overturn on that. So um, I did want to show you guys some of these prints that I printed off. So I had to make a mount for my Frozen Sonic Mini 4K because I needed a drip mount for it to make the resin drip off a little bit more. And we essentially just more or less used the PLA that's inside here because, well, they provided it. And I just wanted to print a few things with the PLA and they all came out pretty well. So just kind of showing you that and how the infill is. Uh, I want to say we had this set at 20%, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but you did see that, that little piece where it looks like it's kind of extra. Well, it is an extra piece. It's it's essentially a slip-in piece. And I don't know if I can take this out or not. It might just be in there for good. Uh, but essentially, it's a piece where you can have uh, the hanger hang it straight or you can put this little insert here that I printed with it, uh, which essentially has it on an angle as well. So uh, and that's just a slide in piece and that slid in and snapped in there perfectly, no problems. We didn't have any issues with it. So the fitment of it, the dimensional accuracy of the printer right out of the box, it's fantastic. Uh, another one that I see a lot of people doing on TikTok at the time that I was unboxing this, uh, this printer 
was a, um, I think it's called a voxel um, Spider-Man print. And essentially, that's what it looks like, is just like a fishnet. Now, you can see there's some stringing on there, and that's kind of be expected with the spool that came with it. I mean, most of the printers that I get that come with spools, they're not the greatest. So that's why I usually try and burn them up and just get them out of there. Um, that's why I'm fine with most companies providing like, you know, maybe 50 grams of filament or 100, whatever it was. Um, you know, just enough to do maybe a benchy at that. Uh, but I will say that this this print came out pretty good, minus the stringing and everything. So I didn't clean it up or anything. I wanted to show you guys exactly how it came off the printer. You know, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And uh, I was very surprised about this because, yes, we did not print this with any supports. And as I started printing it, I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a problem here because, you know, there's a lot of thin parts here and I don't know if this printer is gonna kind of stand up to that but this printed with no raft no uh no bed adhesion nothing like that just straight on the bed ready to rock and roll and it just printed amazingly it's it, not too bad of like overhangs and everything like that and it, it's not like a super over complicated extruder or anything it's just it's got a simple fan on it uh, I want to say it's a 4015 and just your basic hot end fan and that that's it that's all it's got so um i'm very surprised that it uh it printed as well as it did now i did have a print on here and one of the great things uh, that i love about this printer too is the fact that it's been a while since i've had a glass bed that works properly and has not worked and all these prints that i printed they essentially just came right off the the printer so um, I just wanted to kind of show you guys that, yeah, that was stuck on the bill plate. So I just took this off and I wanted to do this, uh, to kind of show you guys the, um, the program that you use with this uh, specific printer that it comes with does have a very nice, um, support structure set up. So it's actually got kind of two of them. It's kind of got a resin printer set up, uh, support structure, and then it's got what I kind of use on Simplified 3D, uh, which is really, really nice. And it's it's very like thin lines. Maybe you guys can see that. You see how it's kind of lined out there? And essentially that just makes for removing supports super, super easy. And just pulling away. Like it's nobody's business. Like look at that. I know it's really hard to see the red color, but that's one of the reasons why I wanted to show this off so you guys can see me remove these supports in real time now obviously you know you might have to use some pliers here and there but essentially for the most part you don't have to these these supports are just going to pull right off with your fingers so like super simple and uh the damage that you know like the underside usually has with supports is not that bad on these uh these prints so let me remove some of these port supports and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. But uh, it does come out very, very nice and not too, like, um, like very rigidy, I guess you could call it, um, where most supports look pretty bad when they, they remove from the prints. Um, if you guys do or do not know about FDM, like, you can see that. That's not bad. That's some good layering. Like, I'm, I'm very pleased with, with how this came out. And basically what this is is a little paint palette because I started getting into uh, painting. And I saw this model, and I did size it down a little bit to fit on that print bed. It's not much uh, size down, but it is a little bit. I want to say I sized it down from 100% to, like, 80. So about 20% difference. So not super... Uh, uh, difference on that but uh, you can also tell that the settings that we have dialed in here are very very well because you can see the lettering came out pretty good and for it being tuned down to uh, 20 percent less and those still came out to where you can read that like that's pretty good and you can see on there some of those lines those those dark deep lines that are coming off on the print here that's essentially what I was telling you about when I was printing this. 
I did notice that the uh, the extruder was clicking, so I knew right away that something was off on the bed, but I, I let it fly because it, it printed the two other prints perfectly fine, but this one, it kind of started to do it, and that's essentially because we were using full build, build volume on this print. So very, very nice print so far that we're coming off of this. And like I said, I'm, I'm very impressed. If like anybody knows anything about Flash Forge, you guys know that this is a tried and true printer. Uh, I rarely see people have major issues with this. Usually it's issues with like a clogged nozzle, something very simple. And like I said, with these, they have interchangeable nozzles that can just be easily switched out, no problem. Um, and you could just swap it from a, um, a high temp nozzle to a, um, to a, like a regular nozzle for PLA. So I was trying to remove that with my hands, but it wasn't coming off this time. But essentially it does come with another different nozzle on here. And this one is calibrated number three. So this one's got it all set up. Let me see if I can kind of show this. But essentially, this says 0.4, and this goes all the way up to 265 degrees. You can see that right there. So that's 265 degrees Celsius. And uh, so that that's very, very nice that it, uh, it has that ability to print at temperatures that hot for something that's really, really small. And like I said, everything's already enclosed. So you're good to go. No problems with it whatsoever. It's got a lot of nice features. Like I said, the, the camera, the remote monitoring, the remote printing is awesome. Like you don't, you could just sit at your computer, do everything, put it into the slicer, send it over to the printer, and it's good to go. And it holds up to eight gigs of storage, which is quite a lot of files. So I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, I need to have like a 32 gig SD card. That's not necessarily needed on most printers. Um, you could usually get away with 16 gigs and that's, more than enough you can probably put like a thousand files on there and that's no joke so but the other great thing is um you know unlike the printers that i talked about earlier before like the ender 3 the voxel lab the elegoo uh this printer is basically done right out of the box so like i said it's got some styrofoam in it that you do some uh calibration on the beginning It'll automatically lift that up, you pull it out, and everything's ready to go. You load in the filament, and you're starting to print within probably 10 minutes out of unboxing everything. So if you're looking for a one-and-done printer that has the ability to print higher-end uh, type of uh, materials, then I do highly suggest getting the Flash Forge Adventure 3 Pro. Um, other than that, that's really all I got. I will leave some uh, links down below for the models that I showed you guys off that I printed in the PLA that they sent with the machine. Um, and then I will also leave a Amazon affiliate link for the machine if you guys decide this is the type of machine that you're looking for. Um, again, you know, go ahead and use that. Um, if not, like I said, you can probably get it a little bit cheaper deal on FlashForge.com. And uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, getting it directly from them, you'll probably save yourself maybe 50 bucks, depending on what day you're going. You know, you, you can always have sales going on and whatnot. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you got any questions, comments, concerns about the machine, go ahead and leave them down below. And uh, yeah, that's it. Until next time, guys. Happy printing.